were the wise men in the Bible? And did they really have names? That's what we'll talk about today. In order to find Jesus, every one of us needs direction. God gives it. The story of the wise men shows us how. The star was a sign enough to lead the Magi to Jerusalem, but it took scripture to lead them to Jesus. Max Lucado. Today we're going to talk about the Magi. I have a brand new podcast where we're going to read the entire Bible three times a week, one chapter per episode. And the first episode is Matthew 1. Then we'll go to Matthew 2, which is the only book of the Bible that even mentions the wise men or the three kings. That podcast will debut on January 8th. And this podcast is called The Bible in Small Steps. Of course it is. It's all part of the Small Steps Empire. I never knew I was going to have a Small Steps Empire. But back to the topic of the Magi. Who were they? In general, the wise men were just educated people. They were skilled at learning, and they weren't Jewish. The word Magi means magic, right? So they were magicians. But I think back in the time, magician, astrology, astronomy, land surveying, the occult, myth, history, they were all blended together. People didn't really separate them out into different occupations or different trains of thought. You were just capable of learning. And so you learned about all sorts of things, making you a wise man. We hear about them in Daniel. Daniel was supposed to lead this particular group, yet he didn't go against God. But the wise men often did. They believed, they studied all religions. They took books, you know, as the Babylons sacked nations. They had access to a great amount of learning. But we see in Matthew 2 that they witnessed an astronomical thing. They probably knew a lot about scriptures. They had Jews living in Babylon and through the places where the Jews were displaced out of Israel, living among all sorts of people. If these wise men were from the area of Babylon or Assyria or even Turkey or parts of Persia, they would have Jews among them and the Jewish literature would be known among them. They knew about the star and the prophecy and the virgin and the Messiah being born. They went out knowing what they were looking for because, again, they were educated people. I know a lot of times people will also try to come up with reasons about why the star existed. Oh, Jupiter and Saturn were in alignment at that point. Or there was a comet, even though the Chinese, who were very good at recording comets, didn't see that. In the end, God made this light to lead people, whether they came or not, to Jesus. They stopped by Herod, either by force or just by, hey, we're entering another person's country. We should stop and say hi to the king. This doesn't seem to be unique. Magi did go to other countries and would stop by and talk to the king. Discussion of Nero being visited by Magi, wise men from the east. So it happened. It's interesting that the king, in the case of Nero or even Herod the Great, took time to spend time with them. They wanted to learn from whatever these people had to say. So then Herod consulted his own priests and scholars and then met with the wise men again. And so then Herod uses his guile, his ability to lie and say, hey, you know, I want to worship the Messiah too. I know you're here looking for him. If you just come back here and let me know where you find him, I I want to go and pay my tribute too. And they, again, were wise men. And they were given a vision and told not to go home that way again, go back a different way. One of the things that got me interested in the Magi and who they were was a really weird thing. It was a song by James Taylor called Home by Another Way. It's one of my favorite songs. Those magic men, the Magi, some people call them wise, or even Oriental, even kings. Well, anyway, those guys they visited with Jesus, they sure enjoyed their stay. Then warned in a dream of King Herod's scheme, they went home by another way. Yes, home by another way, home by another way. Maybe me and you can be wise guys too and go home by another way. We can make it another way, safe home, as they used to say. Keep a weather eye on the charts on high and go home by another way. See, that was cute. Wasn't that cute? I just always liked that. And so I always think sometimes we have to go home by another way. So getting back to the wise men, they brought gifts. And in some sense, a lot of people feel that the reason people thought that the wise men, the magi, were kings is because they had such 
amazing gifts. Gold was a gift of a king. Frankincense, it was used as a worship to God. And then myrrh was a tribute, a cleansing part that you did during burial services. Now, as Christians, we look at that and say, wow, here it is. We have a payment to a king, worship to God, and a preparation for a death burial to a baby. But to us, it makes sense because we see the end of the story. We see how this goes. And so their gifts make a lot of sense. But these gifts were rare, some of them coming out of the Arabian Peninsula, also expensive. So it makes people believe these were kings. Somewhere towards the West, it was a trade route. And so they could have met up with the trade route and picked up these gifts from that. We don't know. We don't know a lot about them other than what's listed in the Bible. But we do know that these gifts were expensive. Bible has areas where it looks like there were prophecies of the three kings, but we don't really know anything from this passage. There's no names given, no nationalities. People also consider that in 1 Kings 10, that the prophecy of the anticipated kings or magi were announced there. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. A multitude of camels will cover you. Young camels of Midian and Ephah, those from Sheba will come, and they will bring gold and frankincense, and they will bear the good news of the praise of the Lord. That sounds pretty compelling for sure, that this has to do with the light of the Lord being seen and kings bringing gifts. So that's a probable reason why people thought kings, and it may be. Isaiah 60, which talks about the kings to the brightness of the dawn, bearing gold and frankincense. And then Psalm 71, may all kings fall before him. And others say that the prophecies are out of context and are not referring to this event. But being wise men was a high position in any kingdom, probably gave them access to a lot of treasure funds from whatever nation they came from. And they were likely well-to-do men. Or very likely, they came from the area of Parthian. This was the heir of Babylon, the same land as it, and was a great powerhouse at that time. Took on a lot of the aspects of Babylon. And this land went all the way from Afghanistan to Pakistan on the western side of things. So it was huge. Or people suggested maybe Armenia. And then people thought these were from the east, meaning the Arabian Peninsula. And there were church histories from as early as 125 AD who listed not only the fact that these were wise men, they identified them as kings and gave them names, Melchor, Casper, and Balthazar. So some people think that there were three, which was again, according to tradition, but also because there were three gifts. They each had one gift, they think. And according to the one tradition, one was from India. One was from Africa, and one was from Persia, or perhaps Babylon. But all we know is that they saw the star, and they fell down and worshipped God. What's interesting is how many people saw that star and never went. When Herod sees a sign like the star, he thinks of things of murder. When other people see the star, they might be terrorized or afraid. Some people see the star and go, man, I'm kind of busy today, not heading out there. I'm taking a look to see what that is. Then there's these guys who not only were not Jewish, were mystics, were magicians, were educated people from a long way away. They made the effort to go out and worship Jesus. And some of these names come in from Greek manuscripts around 500 AD. There's another Greek document that comes in on the 8th century. AD and maybe was originally Irish and then was translated into Latin. But that's where a lot of these traditional names, locations of the three kings of the Magi came from. And the Zoroastrian religion had the uh, concept of priest or magician as part of their faith. That was a religion that still exists today, but was bigger back in those Persian times. The Greeks believed that the Chaldeans, now think about Chaldeans, if you don't know, Abraham came from that area in the city of Ur. The Greeks believed that that was the founding area of the Magi, and they invented both astrology, magic, and 
the mysticism that we still see today. One of the reasons that people thought there were three of them is there was a Bible commentary called the Exposition of the Gospel of Matthew that said that the three magi represented Asia, Africa, and Europe, and that they descended from the three sons of Noah. Not sure why the three sons of Noah represents those continents, and that was part of the tradition. And so sometimes when you see the magi, you will see Melkor with a gray beard, Gaspar as being young and beardless, and Balthazar with a dark beard and darker skin. And I know I've seen that too. When you look at pictures or you look at nativity scenes that you can buy in the store, that's what sometimes they look like because they're using it based on that tradition of who it was. One of the interesting parts was Casper. And sometimes it's also, he's also known as Gasper with a G. But there was a dig that found a kingdom that was somewhere near Afghanistan, India, that mentioned King Gasper. And then there's even a coin with his image on it. And so that gives some people this belief that he came out of either this Persian background or from India. They said that this King Gasper was from a place on the Golden Peninsula near Java in the Indian Ocean. And that's where it was specifically given. Some of the study of him said that he was an Indian scholar. It said that he represented a king of India. Again, think of more smaller nations compared to the India we have today, and was on the Silk Road. So he would have had access to many different kinds of gifts and treasures that went along that trading route. Melkar was believed at that point to be the oldest member of the Magi, according to tradition, and that he was possibly a king of Persia, and that he brought the gift of gold, which was available to him in Persia. Melkor was mentioned in that same commentary that I just mentioned a moment ago. His name was part of a Greek manuscript. He is often seen as the older man with the white beard and considered to be a king of Persia. Because he was a king, he had a lot of access to gold. Also along the Silk Route again, that has access to all those gifts. And then Balthazar has a few other names that are related to his name, was thought to be from Africa. And he had a dark beard, and the gift of myrrh was brought by him. Now, according to tradition, again, not the Bible, when they returned to their own country, they celebrated the Christmas and the birth of Jesus in Armenia in 54 AD and later died. And the story is that they were martyred. And then it talked about Helena, who was the mother of Constantine, you hear a lot about her in Israel, looking for relics of the church. She's the one who found the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. She's the one who started looking for locations and items from the Bible. The spear that pierced Christ's side, the cross of Christ, bringing back what she considered to be actual relics of the life of Jesus. And so she brought back these relics to the Hagia Sophia in Constantinople. This is Turkey now, but it was a beautiful church and a Christian headquarter. And this was in 314. And the remains of the three wise men, the three kings, being moved from Constantinople in 344 AD to Milan. The Holy Roman Emperor, Frederick Barbarossa, then moved him to Cologne, France in 1164. And then we're all made saints by the Catholic Church. There was a story that Marco Polo said that he saw the three tombs of the Magi in Tehran in 1270. And from the book of his travels in Persia, in the city of Saba, which the three Magi set out and went to worship Jesus Christ. In the city, they are buried in three very large, beautiful monuments, side by side. And above them is a square building, carefully kept. The bodies are still entire, with hair and beard remaining. Marco Polo, Book of the Million, Book 1, Chapter 13. But all these places celebrate having a burial place of the three wise men, the three kings. But Protestants tend to have a different view. It became later in tradition with some of the Protestant reformers, namely John Calvin, who didn't like the wise men being referred to as kings. He thought that this was something that was made up. It was something that was specifically very Catholic. And so they didn't look at these men as kings, but instead looked at them as wise men who knew the prophecies, knew how to get there, had the means to get there, and then visited and bowed down before Jesus. Still remarkable that people outside the faith came all that way and recognized Jesus as the Lord. 
but the Magi is still honored throughout the entire world. They have their Catholic feast day and have other celebrations in other nations. Isn't that interesting? And I think because they were people that were brought to Jesus, not by being part of the tradition of Israel or traditionally Jewish, but brought from other places and came to believe. I think they make them even wiser because, again, they didn't believe because it was their own prophecy of their own faith, but they came, followed the star, and bowed down and worshiped Jesus as strangers to the faith, maybe people who knew of it but weren't of that faith. But they have their own celebrations in Spain and Argentina, Mexico, Paraguay, Uruguay. They call it the Eve Epiphany, January 5th. And almost every Spanish city has in the evening a festival with sweet things given to children and parents, and then a play of the Three Kings and put on on the Eve of Epiphany. And they say this started in 1886. The Philippines also has a celebration of the Three Kings. And the children there will leave their shoes out on the eve of Epiphany so they can get sweets and money from the three kings, apparently filling up the shoes. Unfortunately, Santa Claus has replaced the three kings in most of these celebrations around the world. And in other places, they're still honored as saints and as important members of the Christmas story. In Poland, they have a celebration writing the initials of the kings on the doors of Catholic homes. And in Germany, children dress up as the Magi. Think of that nativity play or the pageant. In Spain and Portugal, there's a ring-shaped cake which contains a small figure, and that's supposed to be the Magi. And whoever gets a small figurine of one of the kings gets a crown of cardboard put on their head, and whoever gets the cake with the bean in it has to pay for it. In France and Belgium, there's a cake containing Jesus as a baby. I've seen that in New Orleans. And I think the remarkable thing is, is whether or not we think of them as kings or we think of them as these people who are named from these other locations in the world, the amazing part is, is we have educated people, however many there were from wherever they were, saw the signs of the scriptures, took a dangerous trip, all travel was dangerous back then, with expensive gifts, making it probably even more dangerous, and brought them to the baby Jesus, gave them to Mary and Joseph, and bowed down and worshiped God. They were the first of the non-Jewish people to become believers in Christ. And again, like I said, a lot of people saw that star, and some were afraid, and some didn't care, and some people came. Like the three wise men, like the shepherds in the field. And they are honored in our story today because they actually worshiped Jesus right from the very beginning. And that's what we hope this story of Jesus does for us that the scripture leads us all to Jesus lying in a manger. So, my challenge to you is think about if we had gifts today, what would we be giving Jesus? I don't think it would be something like a technology or a cell phone, but this idea of this imagery of a king, of worship of God, and preparation for the death of Jesus. Do we have things in our modern times that likewise represent those things to us? All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Part of this is coming out that I'm doing a brand new podcast called The Bible in Small Steps, where we're going to start out in the New Testament. Matthew 1, and we're going to talk about each chapter of the Bible three times a week. I've said before that I grew up as an atheist who was raised Jewish, spent two summers in Israel and got to see many different things. And I hope to tell the story of the Bible, of the people. These were real people with real human expressions so that we can understand what God wants from us and what we hope for ourselves once reading the scripture. This Magi story is coming out of the book of Matthew. And so I get a chance in this podcast to take a topic and expand on it more deeply so we understand a particular aspect more. So some of these episodes go along with the schedule of the Bible in Small Steps. Soon we'll talk about Herod the Great, for example. Please join me. You can find it at thebibleinsmallsteps.com. The website's not quite up yet, but it will be soon. And remember, in our walk following the star ends in Jesus. 
but we're also taking small steps. <laughs>